Hey, what's going on guys? It's Amir and today we're going to be reacting to Brent Maverick's uh, video of him getting a hair transplant done in Turkey. As you guys know, I also got a hair transplant done in Turkey, so I want to kind of compare, contrast and see how his experience went. Without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into the video. Well, first of all, I got to say... The cinematography on this is absolutely amazing already, man. Great production quality, Brent. Keep that shit up. Surprise, I am getting a hair transplant. <laughs> yes, I am here. Some of you guessed it in the beautiful Istanbul, Turkey, and I'm getting a hair transplant. You might be looking at my hair right now thinking, Brett, your hair is not even that bad. Why are you getting... I mean, he's right. I mean, his hair is not that bad. But that's what people said to my hair transplant as well when I was going to Turkey. And they're like, oh, your hair transplant? I thought the, you know, the beginning video was your final result. But only the person going through it really knows what's up. So, I mean, I kind of see his point of view. But let's look further to see exactly where he was balding freaking hair transplant well i actually agree with you i'm looking at myself in the viewfinder right now and my hairline actually looks pretty good but i assure you it is not this good it's just kind of like an optical illusion i think from the lighting this is what my hair looks like on any normal day with normal lighting as you can see yeah i know as you guys can see his hairline is definitely receding that takes away the symmetry of your face and just bringing that forward not only makes you look a whole lot younger but also makes your face look a whole lot more symmetrical and just adds that little mm to your face and you no know, right now obviously he's a great looking guy and i'm sure he, he looks like he's in great shape but i can see where he's coming from where just adding a little extra mm to where he's getting his hair transplant would add just a little bit more uh, structure to his face um, so I definitely see your point of view Brent it's coming back quite a bit here in the corners in the temple area as I'm heading down to the lobby to meet up with my driver and it's starting to feel really real at first it just kind of like felt like an idea but now this is coming together and we're doing this thing <sighs> let's go Great, thank you. All right. Not bad, not bad, huh? That's a really nice van, not gonna lie. Uh, let's get this fresh line up going. Sheesh. At the consultation, the doctor drew on my new hairline and then together we discussed it and made small changes until it was exactly what I was looking for. Then it was time to get ready for the operation. All right guys, so I just put my camera in this locker here. They gave me a gown <laughs> that I'm going to be wearing and then I'm going in for the operation. As you can see, I got the lines so what's interesting right here in this clip, I thought it was just his hairline they're bringing back, but it's also the temples on the side. So that's actually a really interesting uh, point because that's going to definitely add a lot more symmetry and structure to his face by doing that. Now that I look back at it, I kind of wish I got a little bit of the transplant work done over here. Uh, but I mean, it's, it's not the end of the world. But usually when people are receding from their hairline, it's not just the hairline going back. It's also the temples on the side right here that also start slanting and going back a little bit more too. So I'm glad he's getting that done from the get-go it's gonna be really interesting to see how it goes out on my head where my hairline is gonna be damn I'm gonna be looking so fresh but yeah so uh, this is probably the last time you'll see me till afterwards so uh, I'll see you on the other side peace so I wasn't able to film my own operation, unfortunately, but what they did was they first used local anesthesia to numb the donor area. So this part, I want to say, is a pretty painful part of the procedure. I would say it's probably the most painful. So it's 35 minutes of 6 out of 10 pain, and once everything goes numb, it becomes smooth sailing at that point. They're extracting from, and they used an FUE punch tool to make small circular incisions around each hair follicle. Then they go ahead and extract the hair follicles individually. Next, they use a sapphire blade to make micro channels smoothly and create small recipient sites and then they simply transplant the hair follicles. Okay guys, so I just got back to my hotel after the operation and this is how it's looking. The only thing you want to be careful of when you're in this state or you know if you're planning to go to turkey is that you don't want to hit anything you don't want to bump your head into it because the grafts at this point are so sensitive that they can fall out um in fact when i was actually going back from the clinic to the hotel and i was getting into the van i accidentally bumped my head into the van when i was going in so be careful uh luckily my grafts didn't fall out because it wasn't that hard of an impact 
but this right there it's super prone to potential uh you know damage if not handled correctly i know it hurts actually quite a bit <laughs> i just took one of the pain pills that they gave me um hasn't kicked in yet it, it just feels really tight like i have a headache yeah, so it definitely feels a little bit weird, uh, especially the first 24 hours, 24 to 48 hours. It just feels like there's something heavy just, uh, just like placed on your head. Uh, and that's because of the anesthesia that's swelling up your hair, uh, your head, as well as the amount of intense amount of trauma that your head's been through. Literally, you know, uh, your grafts getting extracted to needles getting punched in to, you know, grafts getting placed in. So it's a lot for your head to go through. In this stage, you do want to drink a lot of water uh, as water Water is going to help bring down the swelling a whole lot more after two or three days one you i don't know if you learn to live with it or it just ends up getting better and you start getting more used to it but not to mention it still does sting in the back where your donor area is so let's see what his experience looks like tonight which is going to be his you know toughest night as being the first night i guess that happens when you get stabbed at you know two thousand times in your head but yeah i'm gonna uh use this little neck pillow they gave me and try to go to bed um and tomorrow I got to go in and get them to take the bandage off and clean it for the first time and show me how to clean it. So yeah, that's what we got going on. See you tomorrow. Oh, see how he's using a neck pillow over here? Um, I do highly recommend bringing your own neck pillow. The ones that the clinics give you, it's like a most, like, most of the time it's an inflatable one. But if you bring a memory foam one from home, uh, that's gonna be a whole lot more comfortable and giving you a better night's rest uh, than the inflatable ones. Just a pro tip. All right, so it is officially the next day. I just went in this morning to get a cleaning and for them to take the bandages off and they did a little bit of laser work, which definitely helped my scalp feel better. But I just want to show you guys, oh, and they gave me this super cool hat. I mean, check it out. I'm super swagged out right now. But anyways, I wanted to show you how it's looking. So, ba -da 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 -da, drum roll, please. Bang. Wow, it already looks a whole lot better once they cleaned it up. So this is the day after the operation. That's how it looks from the front. I'll show you how it looks from the back if I can. Yeah, so it looks like they got a lot of his, um, I think it, from his thumbnail is 2400 graphs. And it seems like they extracted a good bit from the side, from the side and the top over here. Typically when they extract the grafts over here at the lower part of your scalp, like right over here at the bottom, they typically don't extract as much because these are a little bit on the finer side. The healthiest hairs are gonna be up on top over here where you can see the most extraction. Those are gonna be the best quality of grafts that you can get. Um, and obviously once you transplant them onto the area that you need, that's gonna give you the best results. Once his hairline grows out, in the next four to six months he's gonna be looking pretty damn jacked in that area this backside this is where they took the hairs from and then they used a method called fue and dhi to implant the hairs in the front here and this is a total of 2400 grafts so 2400 hairs implanted into the front from the back <laughs> so how was the operation the operation so what's interesting is that you know, 2,400 uh, grafts in the U.S. would be considered a lot just for the hairline. But in Turkey, this is considered a pretty normal practice, pretty normal procedure. And these people have the experience level to go ahead and do so. I know in the U.S., maybe they may have done around like a thousand, maybe 1,500 grafts at max. In Turkey, I do notice they do tend to use a lot more grafts to give you a better uh, pack, a better density than the U.S. where we tend to play it a little bit more safe and save our hair follicles for future surgeries in the case that we may need so, um, you know, in the near future if we continue to lose the hair. And honestly, wasn't that bad. What they did was they gave you an IV to kind of chill you out and then they did local anesthesia, which means you, they numb the parts that they're gonna be taking and putting the hair into. Now, one of the problems was I didn't know that I could tell them like, hey, it hurts. So when the numbing started to wear off, I was just like, oh, this really hurts, but I guess it's part of it. <laughs> Dude, that was exactly me. Like when there were some areas, I mean, most of, I was 90, 98% numb, but when they were picking out some of the hair follicles where the anesthesia wore off a little bit, I just kind of bit my teeth and I'm like, all right, whatever, we'll just get through it. Whereas my friend Thayyip who came with me, he literally just told them every time it hurt, they just gave him the anesthesia and he was good to go. But I didn't know you could do that either. 
<laughs> so it did hurt for a while there in the middle, but then they did more numbing stuff and it filled fine after that. It took about three hours to pull the hairs and about three hours to put the hairs back in for a total of about six hours of operating time. So um, yeah, kind of a long time, but you know, I think in the end, hopefully it'll all be worth it. I know I look like a freaking alien right now. It's funny when you're walking around this place and the doctor's office, there's, there's so many people that look just like this. It's like, we're all some like weird secret society or something. As far as the clinic goes, it's really nice, really uh, modern and uh, super high end. I wasn't sure, I thought maybe it would look like some little hole in the wall or some rundown doctor's office. Yeah, so that's actually a very big uh, misconception about going to another country to get your hair transplant done. A lot of people think that, hey, you know, just because it's a foreign country, it's not the US, it's not Canada, it's not Europe. The facility, hospitals, everything just seems kind of run down, kind of a hole in the wall. They're just going to do an operation out of a bedroom or something. But these places, Turkey especially, they specialize in hair transplants. They're the best in the world at this kind of thing. So it makes sense for them to invest in a nice facility, a nice setting, and create that perfect atmosphere where the client feels comfortable and welcomed when getting their hair transplant done. Because it was, if it was out of some janky room, I would not do it. Having a welcoming clinic definitely helps you ease up and trust the clinic a whole lot more than you know some janky room. It's just kind of based on what I've seen so far here in Turkey. The infrastructure is just many years in the past, so that's kind of what I was used to seeing. But no, it was very nice, very modern, very clean, and was just a great atmosphere and great place. So I want to talk about some of the pros and cons of using this clinic and getting this operation done. So first con is that, and actually these are cons that happen at every clinic. They're kind of unavoidable with hair transplants, so just keep that in mind. They told me over FaceTime that I would need about 14 1500 grafts and they ended up doing about 2400 which is a thousand more and I'm just like a little bit nervous I'm like is that gonna be too much but I'm just gonna have to go ahead and trust the doctors and trust yeah so that's exactly what happened to me and it seems like a pretty common practice with Turkish clinics uh, because there's only so much that you can see over FaceTime and over pictures uh, when they actually put you under the machine and run the whole data with how many graphs you'll exactly need, where you're thinning, how many graphs you have available, exactly how spaced out the follicles are between each balding area, that's when they're able to accurately determine how many hair follicles you will need to fill out the, the area. And as we see that in the US, we're a lot more conservative with the hair follicles to save for future surgeries. And again, it would make sense, as I said, it would maybe do a thousand to fifteen hundred graphs over here. They did say about like fourteen hundred graphs, but just with the nature of their work and the way that they do things over there they will definitely pack you with a lot more grafts obviously there's nothing wrong with it if done under the right supervision with the right a doctor who has the proper experience and can map out your hair based on not just your current state but also if you're gonna need surgeries in the future and if you go to a reputable place they can do that job very well the professionals, I guess they would know better than me, right? Another con is that the recovery is obviously pretty tough. I have to sleep sitting up for the next couple weeks. I can't actually wash and shower like I normally would for... Yeah, so that's another really challenging part about getting a hair transplant. Um, I don't think this would be, you know, just in Turkey, but anywhere in general. I didn't shower for like three or four days, which kind of made me feel, you know, a bit grossed out. And uh, yeah, I mean, you are in an uncomfortable position for the first like two or three weeks. Um, once, you know, your donor area kind of heals up a little bit, it does feel like a little bit of a sting in the back, you know, every time you sleep. So that's why you have to sleep on that. Uh, neck pillow or the travel pillow uh, even after you're home uh, but that's just a growing pain that you just have to kind of get through and once you do uh, and you're in your first month out after that it's pretty smooth sailing you know minus the shedding phase and whatnot but that's on for a later time but that's probably gonna be the most discomfort you're gonna feel within the first two or three weeks post transplant at least another month or so and I can't work out for about 20 days which is gonna be a problem for me <laughs> But I guess, you know, pain is beauty, right? That's what they say. But so far, that's about it as far as cons go. Uh, some of the pros that, that using this clinic, it was like all inclusive. Like you didn't have to think about anything. They set up all of your drivers, your hotel. Uh, they have food for you. Everything is, 
they just hold your hand through everything so there's no guesswork and it was super easy. And now I didn't research a whole lot how much the pricing compared with other uh, clinics. But with kind of the minimal research I've done comparing, I can tell you that this was a much better deal doing it over here in Turkey just because the US dollar goes so much further over here. Like we could get a huge feast of food for only like $13. So the procedure was definitely on the more affordable side. Now the Absolutely, in Turkey you can never go wrong regardless even if those clinics are on the high end that would still be considered a steal of a deal if you got it done in the US. For over here, the average rate of a hair transplant is anywhere in between 10 to $15,000, if not more, depending on how many grafts you will need. Um, and over here, we charge by the hair follicles. So the amount of follicles you'll need is gonna be how much you're gonna be paying. Whereas in Turkey, in most of the clinics in Turkey will charge you a flat rate, regardless of the follicles that you're gonna need, as well as offer you some additional services like laser therapy, PRP sessions, uh, my clinic offered Oxycure, um, obviously the five-star hotel transportation, everything to just kind of ease up your process. So even on the high end for all that stuff, you're paying like six grand, right? Over here, just for laser therapy and PRP alone, you're gonna be paying like three grand. In Turkey, you would be getting everything plus a hair transplant. You'd be paying anywhere in between three and four grand for a quality job, and that would be considered, you know, a steal of a deal compared to what you'd be paying over here. The type of transplant that they did was mostly FUE, which is where they manually make an incision and then take the hair and plant it, which is better for large surfaces that need to be covered. And then a little bit of it was DHI, which is direct hair implantation, I believe. And that's where they can do it all at once. They can, you know, extract it very quickly and plant it. And I think they use that for the sides here. The top, I think, was the FUE. And this is the more modern way of doing it compared to, you know, what your dad or grandpa might have done, which is the FUT, which is where they take that long strip that they cut out of the back of your head and then implant the hairs from there, which, you know, usually doesn't work a lot of the time. So I don't know about the whole doesn't work uh, part, but yeah, definitely there's the FUT. UT procedure where they cut out a strip. That's the one that Elon Musk has and a lot of the older generation has. Uh, but FUE is like the new procedure that started in the late 2000s and has been adopted in today's majority of the clinics. But there's a lot of clinics here in the US that will still offer FUT depending on the patient and you know what their hair goals are. But if you go to Turkey, you know, majority of the clinics will offer FUE or DHI. But again, they each have their own pros and cons. And but these days FUE is the most popular procedure and that's also the one that I got as well and uh, as I said nothing wrong with it I think uh, he's gonna turn out just fine it wasn't that one but yeah guys this is how it's looking it's probably gonna be a couple weeks until I'm gonna be you know back to uh, making videos again luckily though I have a lot of videos to work on and edit and put out in the next couple weeks um, this is definitely feels very strange it feels very tight uh, and a bit painful, but um, I think looking ahead in the future a year from now, maybe six months from now I think it, it will all be worth it So I guess maybe I'll do like a four month update and a one year update and you can see how the uh, progress comes along But yeah, thank you guys for coming along in this journey um, Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next I think he got his hair transplant done at the perfect time on the perfect spot and I know his results are gonna turn out phenomenal. And especially the fact that, you know, he's not diffusely thinning from what it seems all over his head. He doesn't have any thinning on the crown area like I did. Um, I think his procedure was pretty simple, straightforward, and just within the four to six months, he's gonna be looking a whole lot better. And uh, I, I, as I said, it's gonna add a lot more structure and symmetry to his face. And he already has a crazy jawline. So having a little bit extra hair on there, it's gonna make him, you know, 12 out of 10. I wish Brent nothing but the best of luck for his uh, upcoming months. And I hope you guys enjoyed this reaction video. This was definitely a whole lot fun to make. Definitely a little bit different from my normal content, but if you guys did enjoy this video, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell. And if you guys wanna check out the clinic that I went to to get my hair transplant done in Turkey, I'll have their info linked in the description below as well. So if you guys wanna check that out. But other than that, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.